Hey everyone, so I just finished writing an AT&T DMD 5620 terminal emulator. This was a portrait display windowing terminal from 1984 that was often used with the 3B2, um, which I have uh, an emulator of running right here. So let me just kick off the emulator. As you can see, it boots up just like the real terminal does, and Right now, it's running, it's not connected to anything, it's running at 300 baud, or sorry, 1200 baud. So I'd like to change that. Let me first bring up the uh, setup for the terminal. Now you can interact with the mouse or with the F keys. So let me check uh, port options, and I want to change port A to 19200, make that nice and fast. And I like a blinking cursor, so I'll turn that on. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's not connected to anything. So I'm going to open up a new connection to localhost port 9000, which is where the uh, 3B2 emulator is listening. So let me log in. And as you can see, this is essentially what uh, the terminal would have looked like uh, when using it in the real world. Um, but it really becomes cool when you run the layers program. This starts an interactive windowing environment. So as you can see, there's a pull down menu using the right mouse button, and this is how you interact with the uh, layers. So let me create a new layer right here. This is what they call a layer, and it's an interactive terminal. You can have multiple of them up on the screen at the same time. And of course, you can reshape them if you want. So let me redraw this one by sweeping. And it's very useful to have multiple windows open at the same time, obviously. You can be editing in one and compiling in another. But uh, you can also run, let me draw a little one here, and you can, as you can see, I'm going to run a demo called Clock. That's our progress bar about loading the program. Now let me move this one up to the top left. Great, now you just click on a window to make it active, bring it to the front, or you can use the menu and bring it to the top. Now let me show off a program called Jim. This was the interactive mouse-driven editor for layers. takes a while to load, even at 19200 baud, because it's a fairly big program. And it's actually running this program on the terminal itself, not on the host computer. It's loading the code, and then the terminal will run the code. So to use Jim, you have a little context-sensitive uh, pull-down menu using the, the right mouse button. So let me drag out a new window inside Jim, and let me create a new program. So just a quick demo. Uh, all right, now I'll write this out just down here and write out um, Jim demo. Dot C. All right, so there it is. Let me compile it. Uh-oh, we have a syntax error. This just shows how useful a um, multi-window terminal would have been in 1984. So I've added a semicolon there. I was missing one. So now let me write this again. I'll just use the pull-down menu and write. Now let me go back up here. All right. There you go, it works. Uh, there are other cool demos available, and other cool programs. If you just type demo, you'll get a list of the ones that are available. Um, I love, whoops, demo weird, my favorite just some bouncing balls. 
So I'll bring up yet another terminal and run scope, which is fairly interesting. Scope actually shows you context switches on the host computer. So here it's, it's showing me schedules per second. It's kind of useful for debugging, I suppose. But now let me delete that. I'm done with it. Uh, and I think I'm going to pull up memory. As you can see, it shows information about memory. It starts iconized, but you can uh, pull it up there. Let me just move it to the top and move the clock down a little bit, get it out of the way. And also let me delete that demo. Start a new window. Here's all the programs that go with the DMD. Uh, Lens is pretty interesting. Very slow to load again because, well, we're tied to 19200 baud. Now, I can bring this up and, and sort of inspect different areas of the screen. Now let me delete this, bring up a new window. And I think the last thing I want to show is Sysmon, which gives more information about the system. Well, there's not much going on right now. It's a very quiet system, but here's our graph that would show how busy the system was. And you can, of course, just reshape this to be a little bit more uh, out of the way. If I had more users on the system or if it were doing more work, of course, it would be a little more interesting. So I'll just delete that. So anyways, if you're sick of looking at this realistic green phosphor color. This, this is pretty accurate to how the real thing looks. Uh, I have implemented some uh, ability to change the colors because Lord knows this will give you a headache after a while. So just a normal color picker. Um, let's do black and white because it's a little more pleasant on the eyes. Of course, you can always just go back to the default if you ever want to, but for now, let's use black and white. It's a little nicer. So I'll run another demo of weird again in black and white. Yeah, and that's about all there is to it. I mean, let me delete this layer. Uh, delete Jim, because we're done with that, and then exit. takes a couple of seconds to exit. It has to communicate with the host and say, oh, I'm done. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed this demo. Uh, this is available on GitHub, and I'll be uh, publishing a release, hopefully, in the Mac App Store soon. We'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.